In this lesson, we will be finding our T critical values for a T confidence interval. When do we use a T confidence interval? We use a T confidence interval when we are trying to estimate the population mean mu when the population standard deviation sigma is not known. What is the form for a confidence interval for mu? A confidence interval is always of the form we find an estimate for the population parameter then we do plus or minus some critical value times, in this case we will use the standard error of the estimate. The reason we use the standard error is because we do not know the population standard deviation and we have to use our sample to estimate the population standard deviation. So the confidence interval from mu when sigma is not known is given by x bar because that's what we use to estimate the population mean mu, plus or minus the critical value is a t critical value from the t distribution. We need to know the number of degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom are given by n minus 1 or the sample size minus 1. The standard error of x bar is given by the sample standard deviation s divided by the square root of n our sample size. And there is the confidence interval for mu when sigma is not known. So now let's go ahead and do a couple problems where we find our critical value t star for several t confidence intervals. So let's start with a 90 degree, I'm sorry, 90 percent confidence interval and let's suppose our sample size was 3, so the degrees of freedom we will use are 2. If we have a 90 percent confidence interval, how much area is in the central part of our t distribution? 90 percent. How much does that leave left over? That means we have 10 percent unaccounted for at this point. 10 percent has to be divided equally between the two tails, so in each tail we will have 5 percent of our area. Now we are ready to go to a t table and look for our critical value t star. In our t table, we look for the, we need two degrees of freedom and we needed five percent in the upper tail. So the t critical value for the confidence interval we are looking for is 2.92. Let's put that value into our table, 2.92. Now let's consider another 90 percent confidence interval, but suppose our sample size was 6 this time so that we would have 5 degrees of freedom. Again, our central area will be 90 percent. That leaves 10 percent left over and 5 percent in each tail. Now we need to go to the T table and look for the upper 5 percent for 5 degrees of freedom. So let's do that. Now we have 5 degrees of freedom our upper tail probability is still 0.05, so our critical value for this problem would be 2.015. Let's put that value into our table. 2.015. Now let's look at an 80 percent confidence interval. That means we have 80 percent in the central part of our t distribution. That leaves 20 percent left over and that leaves 10 percent for each tail. So this time when we go to the t table we want the upper tail probability to be 10 percent and the degrees of freedom to be 10. So let's look at the table. The upper tail probability should be 10 percent. We have 10 degrees of freedom so the t critical value for this confidence interval would be 1.372. 1.372. Let's do another 80 percent confidence interval. This time our sample size is 38, which means our degrees of freedom will be 37. Again, we have 80 percent in the central area, 20 percent is left over, 10 percent is in each tail. Let's go to the table. We want to look up an upper tail probability of 10 percent with 37 degrees of freedom. Let's see what we find. When we look in our table for 37 degrees of freedom, we don't see 37 degrees. 
After 30 degrees of freedom, it jumps by 10. So what do you do in this case? What you do is you always go down to the l smaller number. Even though 37 is closer to 40 degrees of freedom, the more conservative approach, the wider confidence interval will be if you go with 30 degrees of freedom. So you go with 30 degrees of freedom and an upper tail probability of 1.31. This will give you a wider confidence interval than you if you actually used 37 degrees of freedom. So you want to go with a more conservative approach. And the T critical value you would use in this problem is 1.31. So let's put that into our table. 1.31. If you notice, we left the last column of our table blank. Another way, rather than looking in the body of the table for an upper tail probability, to find the critical value. You can look in the last row of a t-table and it lists the confidence levels that you are looking for. So let's go back to our t-table and use this approach to find our t-critical value and, and show you that they are the same as what we found under this method. Looking at the last row in the t-table, we see our confident confidence levels C. Our first problem that we did was a 90% confidence interval with 2 degrees of freedom. So lo locate 90%, go up to 2 degrees of freedom, and we found using the previous method that it was 2.92. The second problem, again, was a 90% confidence interval, now 5 degrees of freedom, 2.015. We did an 80% confidence level with 10 degrees of freedom, 1.372. The last problem we did was an 80% confidence level with 37 degrees of freedom. 37 is not in our table, so we want to go with the next smallest number, 30 degrees of freedom, which corresponds to a t-critical value of 1.31. So this method is a little bit easier than actually cal calculating the tail probability like we did in the first part of the problem. So now, for any confidence interval, for a T confidence interval, you should be able to calculate the critical value T star for that confidence interval.